Right, so we're looking at sinuses here. Now, we have quite a few different models and specimens where you can see sinuses. So just remember, they're visible from all sorts of different points of view. But this plastic skull that can be pull pulled apart almost completely um, has is the only one we have that has all four sinuses on it. So we'll look at that one to begin with. Now here, uh, so we've got a mid-sagittal section here, but of course there's part of the, the skull missing from here. We've got a mid-sagittal section, anterior here, and then posterior over on the left. So we have frontal bone here, an occipital bone over here. What we can see is here there's a frontal sinus. So that space in there, just, just superior to the orbit, and just goes either side of the midline, that's the frontal sinus. Now from this mid-sagittal point of view, we can see the nasal septum. And we can see just behind it, there's a, a hole here. That's the sphenoidal or sphenoid sinus. Now what we often can't see, but on this model we can, is if we just flip this part of the model up, so we're no longer now right on the midline, we're now just a bit lateral of the midline, here we can see another space in here. That's an ethmoid sinus. They're sometimes called ethmoid air cells or ethmoid sinus there. Now if we just have a quick look at a separate ethmoid bone, which is really very cool, the plastic one that we've got here, this is an anterior point of view. So we're looking at the perpendicular plate here in the middle and then either side of that, the middle nasal concave. Um, so that's the ethmoid bone. If we turn it around this way, looking from a lateral point of view, now we can see the Cristagalli. And then looking from a superior point of view, we can see the cribriform plate here with olfactory foramina in it. Either side of that, we can see that there are air-filled spaces in here. And that's what we're seeing on that plastic skull that we're looking at. So these would be ethmoid sinuses either side here. And the thing to remember really about the ethmoid bone too is it's not really a very solid structure. It's more like a collection of plates with spaces in between. And honestly, if we had a real dry ethmoid bone here and we were to go like that, we'd have a whole lot of bone flakes and that because it really is very, very fragile. All right, so that's what we could see there. We can see an ethmoid sinus there. Now, don't forget, this is really one of the only ways you can see an ethmoid sinus, okay? So that, that, that ethmoid bone, the isolated one I just had, and this one may actually be the only ones we have where you can see an ethmoid sinus. So if you're looking at this model and you can see the nasal septum, it's sphenoid sinus. If you can't see the nasal septum, if it's folded up out of the way, then you're looking at an ethmoid sinus. Now what we can also see though here is there's a great big opening here inside the nasal cavity. Now that's not strictly accurate, that's not what it would really look like, but I'll show you what they're getting at with that there. On this other side of the model, we can see again there's a big opening here, and again, that's not how it would really be in life. But what it, that allows us to see is that there is a big opening or a big space inside the maxilla. So looking from an external point of view this time, if we open the maxilla up, we can see that there's a big sinus in here. So that's the maxillary sinus. And there are a couple of other ways we uh, can see it. There's a, another model we can see it on. But this is probably as good and as clear a view as you're going to get of the maxillary sinus. Again, on this anterior point of view, though, we can see the frontal sinus right here. 